so I'm going to talk about Tangaroa in phase two, hopefully I'm pressing it the right way. So it's continuing into phase two, um, and it really for three reasons. One, because actually it's been really successful in phase one and has been a real opportunity for uh, a focus for Māori Centre, Kaupapa Māori and Iwi-led research and the challenge. Um, the second reason really is we've established this wonderful uh, network of Māori researchers in the challenge, some 50 odd now, um, which has been an amazing privilege to work with and so we want to be able to build on that cohort because actually, as a number of you know, they're hen's teeth in the research world um, and continue to leverage off uh, the, the things that have come out of their work so far. <clears throat> and then thirdly, as a home, and, and I'll talk about the way Tangaroa is going to integrate across the themes, but uh, importantly as a home where um, Māori can be comfortable focusing on Māori things and in a Māori way. So there's kind of a two-fold approach in Tangaroa in Phase 2. The first recognises some of the lessons we learnt in Phase 1 um, around actually making sure that we have research that specifically addresses the needs and aspirations of Māori, whether they are well aligned to the objective of the challenge. So that kind of forms one aspect. The other is providing the opportunity for uh, pieces of work that do um, specifically target those needs and aspirations to contribute to and to inform and to integrate across the themes um, in a very Māori, holistic way. <clears throat> in terms of informing and integrating those themes, it's, it's about providing the opportunity for Māori leadership in, in our research and co-design partnership, co-design, um, building on the achievements I've already talked about and those existing relationships, as well as retaining and enhancing Māori capability. In terms of Māori aspirations, the thing that the, these are some of the, um, the high level things that came out of our conversations with iwi, um, hapu, whānau, Māori organisations, both in phase one and specifically in a workshop um, leading towards phase two. And the biggest sort of overarching question for Tangaroa or, or topic for Tangaroa is really um, providing a platform from which Māori can return to having a strong and rich relationship with the marine environment. That's been a consistent message that's come out quite clearly. In terms of um, some bottom lines, uh, a, a really strong message about treaty partnership first so that this isn't just about um, Māori participating in our research or being involved or engaged in our research but actually being treaty partners in the way we do our work. Um, a respect for values and knowledge, not just the recognition of those values and knowledge. And I think you've got a pretty good picture of how we've been able to do that um, thus far and our commitment to doing it into phase two. You've also heard, um, I think, yesterday and today that one of the key drivers and interests is around preserving, making sure Māori rights and interests are preserved in what we're doing and in the development of an EB approach unique to New Zealand. Representative decision making that came out of some of the um, early presentations yesterday, not just the socialisation of decision making. Um, really keen to see momentum for change, they've kind of, in our conversation with May, they kind of have seen things come and go, and they want to make sure the challenge sets a really good um, foundation for momentum for change. And then a, a specific comment at the bottom there. <clears throat> Our kahui Māori have been very keen on ensuring that we have a, a, a strong treaty-based approach, and so the three uh, treaty-based principles of partnership, protection and participation will inform the way we um, operate, not just in Tangaroa, but certainly um, the way we uh, practice across the challenge. Informing and integrating, so the way we plan to do that, although there may be um, projects centred within Tangaroa, um, we anticipate that those projects will also, and, and some of our researchers will also have leadership roles and partnership roles across the themes. And so we're very keen to make sure that uh, our Māori research partners as well as our Māori researchers are a part of, an important part of that co-development process. 
then uh, you would have seen in the theme presentations that there are specifically visible, as well as being embedded in all of the questions across the themes, there are specifically visible ones that provide a, a, a hook for a more detailed and, and focused research of interest to Māori needs and aspirations. So in degradation and recovery, it's about finding mātauranga based solutions. Um, as Nick mentioned, building uh, you know, a kaitiaki approach in, in blue economy initiatives um, around risk and uncertainty, um, ensuring that cultural understandings and expectations are addressed in, in decision-making processes, and then ultimately providing an EBM approach that's informed by mātauranga whilst preserving rights and interests. And all this against the backdrop of a Māori worldview um, these are sort of, again, some, some tikanga or bottom lines that, um, in, in consultation with our Māori researchers, are things that we um, are keen to make sure, ring the bell on myself, um, and form the way we uh, operate. It's about our research, we about rangatira, enabling self-determination to enable that um, ongoing momentum for change. Whakapapa, and I think the move to a theme-based way of operating is more consistent with the way um, um, with a Māori worldview, uh, uh, being taking a much more holistic approach to project design and delivery, for knowing a tanga, recognising, revitalising the connections and responsibilities between us all, but also between ourselves and our relations in the environment. Um, Kanohi Kitia, recognising that it's important to operate face to face where possible and to work with established relationships and networks and then provide that scope for Māori-led, iwi-led research and kaupapa Māori research. Building on phase one, um, we've learnt lots in, I think, the Tangaroa programme in phase one, and you've heard um, some of the updates from presenters over the last day and a half around uh, getting a better understanding of what kaitiaki tanga actually means in the marine environment. There's been a lot of work previously about you know, its application on land. Um, availability and access to resources, knowledge and information, and um, you heard Regan's presentation uh, earlier today. Um, a better understanding, obtaining a better understanding about the Māori marine economy. Um, Jason and John, uh, John's talk yesterday. Rob's talk about clarifying the, the legal and policy enablers and barriers, um, and I've already mentioned the, the Māori Research Court cohort and um, relationships we've been able, are looking forward to leveraging into phase two. So that's me.